we're going to have a look at how to use our calculator to check our answers to indefinite integration problems. Indefinite integration is where you don't have any limits on your integration. So let's have a look at an example of what our check will look like. We might have a question like this here that we're told to integrate. So we're going to integrate this 1 over root 2 minus x squared. We could use substitution to do that. We'd go all the way through until we get to our final answer. But how do we know in an exam if that answer is correct? Your check should look something like this. And you should have a check for almost every question. Here's another example of what your working might look like. So you're being asked to integrate this here. Go through. You get to this huge answer, but again, you don't know if it's correct or not. Do you want to waste time going through, checking that you've made any little mistakes? Much better and much faster is to use a calculator check like this. And I'm going to show you how to find these numbers, that your question equals something and your answer is exactly the same. You can then tick it and move on. The reason this is so important is because every minute counts in an exam. And if you can do a check like this, where it's noticeable on your page, it's in a huge bubble, then as soon as you see a tick next to that check, you know you don't have to spend any time at all looking through that question, not even a second, just to double check it's right. If you've done this check, it 100% will be right. Suppose this was our question, as in the first example, and this is the answer that we got. Well, we're going to do a check where we've got this. The question is the left-hand side, so this here, and the answer is what we get, our answer to that question. Since no exam certified calculators can do indefinite integration, we must turn our question into definite integration. If your calculator can do indefinite integration, it won't be allowed in the exam. We're going to turn this indefinite integration into definite integration by putting in these limits here. So 0.07 to 0.7. Why have I chosen these limits? Well, they are completely random, but they also have some logic to them. Um, I tell my students, use 0.07 because it's easy to remember because of James Bond, 007. But also if we have a look at the graph of this function, it looks like that. Now, if you have a graphical calculator, you can plot this. If not, it just means you have to be careful with your limits. So we can see here that it's actually approaching an asymptote. The asymptote is when x equals the square root of 2. Hopefully you can see that if x is the square root of 2, our denominator is going to be 0. And 1 divided by 0 is going to be infinity. That's why we get an asymptote. The square root of 2 is approximately 1.4, so you can see as it approaches 1.4, it's just becoming a straight line. So what are we working out by putting in these limits? Well, remember that integration is just area. So going from 0.07, that would be about there. And if we're going up to 0.7, so we're actually calculating this area. So if we chose our limits randomly, if we hadn't plotted this function, and I wouldn't advise plotting the function, I don't think there's a need normally, you'd be very unlucky if, if there was an asymptote in between these two limits. But if you chose, say, 1 and 2, well, look at that, you're going to get an error on your calculator. If you do get an error on your calculator, it's not the biggest deal, just choose different limits. But as a default, I just use these. It stops you having to think about it, and you can just do it automatically. Can you use your calculator to put in these limits? I'm using the graphical calculator, so I'm going to go to the run matrix, number one. Now I'm going to find my definite integration sign. So I need to look along here. If it's not along here, then you need to press this arrow, so F6, and then you'll see it here. It doesn't look like definite integration in this button here, but you can see when you press it, you get spaces for your limits. Now for your x, you're going to use this button here, x theta t. And often students will ask, well, what if I have a number stored as x? For instance, I accidentally have 25 stored as x already. 
Don't worry about that. It's not recalling your stored value. It's only going to use your two limits to plug into this x. As you can see, we're getting an irrational number, a really long number. You don't need to write down the whole thing, but I'd advise to write at least to four significant figures. So in this case, we'd have 0.4683. Right, so we've done the question. Now we have to do the answer. So remember, the answer is what you got from doing all your work in. So here, again, we're going to pretend, well, if we did do this integration, but it was definite integration going between these two limits, we'd still get this same answer. But remember, you'd have your square brackets and you'd put your limits here. Now to work out what this is, you plug your limits into your answer and minus one from the other. So you plug in your 0 0.7 first and then minus your 0 0.07. So we're going to use our calculator to put in this definite integration with these limits. So the first thing we're going to do is do the inverse of sine. But instead of writing x, we're going to write 0 0.7. So you can press execute. And we can store this number using this arrow here. So store it as, and I'm going to store it as A. A is in pink, so I'm going to access that through the alpha, which is also pink. So now my calculator has stored alpha as A. So now I want to put in the second term, but instead of x, I'm going to put in 0 0.07. I don't want to type out this whole term again, so I'm just going to go back up to it. It's highlighted. I'm going to clip it, so you can see above the number 8, there's the word clip. To access it, it's in yellow, so I'm going to press shift, which is also yellow. And you can see it says copy line. I want to do that, so I'm going to press F1. Now if I use my cursor to go down to a new line, I'm going to press shift and number 9. That will paste. You can see the word paste above number 9. But I just need to edit this a little bit, so it's going to be 0.07 now. Execute. I'm going to store it as B this time. And I'm sure you remember that with definite integration we do this term with 0.7 minus this term with 0.07. So that's our alpha A minus alpha B. And look at that, that's the exact same number as we got for our question. So again, if we round to four significant figures, we're going to get 0 0.4683. So both question and answer are exactly the same. We could give it a big tick and we never have to look at it again. An important note is that if you're using trig, this question wasn't trigonometry, but if you're using sine, tan or cos or any other trig functions, make sure your calculator is in radians when doing calculus. Calculus is differentiation or integration. The reason being is because of Squeeze's theorem, but that's a bit beyond the scope of this video. One for you now. Suppose you've integrated this 1 over 2 minus x squared and got this huge answer. You want to know if you're correct, you're in an exam. Pause the video and have a go. So hopefully you remembered that to find the question, you're going to use the definite integral function on your calculator. You should find you get an answer of 0 0.34867. Now for the answer, a bit more complicated. So here I've got the whole function typed out for 0 0.7. If I execute, I find that answer there. I'm going to store that as my A. Execute. I'm then going to, instead of typing out the whole thing again for 0 0.07, my second limit, I'm going to scroll back up and clip it with Shift 8. I'm going to copy the line, so up here I press F1. Go to a new line, scroll down, paste it, that's shift 9. But now we just need to edit those 0.7s to 0.07 and execute. We'll store that answer as B. And now we're going to do A minus B.
and there you see we have the exact same answer as we did for our question. So we can tick that and we know 100% we have that right.